Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be lapping the scope rings on this Henry lever action here, X model. Uh, you can see I got my alignment pins installed already. Uh, they are off. I'll try to put the camera so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, then I'm going to go through the lapping process real quick and mounting this scope. So let me see if I can uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's easier if you put something behind it so you can kind of see. It's not like it's going to be off by much craziness, but I don't know if you can see those pins, those little, little nipples there, but they are not lining up properly. Okay. So what the lapping process is going to do is make it so those pins are in line with each other. I don't know if you can see it, or this angle of the camera is going to work or not, but that's the goal, is to get those little nipples lined up there. Uh, the reason you want to do that, because if you mount a scope like this, then your, your rings aren't aligned. You can actually torque the scope. Once you get it in there and mount it and you torque everything down, it'll actually twist the scope however you want to put it, it'll be off line and you won't ever get that sighted in properly. So, I'm going to remove these. You got a dog in the background, it's okay, they're just playing. Knock it off. So I took out my lapping alignment pins, my lapping rod here, apply the lapping compound momentarily. So I'm going to clean up and move stuff out of the way as I'm working. Lapping compound. Stuff doesn't make a mess. It's a pain in the butt to clean up. So. The lapping compound on the lapping rod. I'll take a more some more of this stuff. So. Now with the compound on, you uh, get through the rings. Okay. 
like I said, this stuff makes a mess. But at the end of the day, you'll be more than satisfied with the job. Especially when your scope's truly sighted in the way it should be. Not just slapping a scope on there and hoping for the best, tightening everything down without torquing. I'm making sure it's aligned. But all that's important. Aligning your scope, torquing everything down properly. All do that improperly you can really, really ruin a scope. You won't get it sighted in all the way. If you're just planking in targets, it might not be so bad, but when you're taking a 200 yard shot at an animal, you want to make sure that scope is dialed in. Even off by a little bit at 200 yards can make a big difference. And you miss that animal completely, or you wounded it and you ain't finding it. So, this is a 30 30. It's not really much of a 200 yard gun, it's a hell of a brush gun. 150 yards. I've never pushed it out to 200 on a 30-30, but I got one coming up that's going to be fun. So, that tightened down. Probably too tight. Yep. You want to be able to move this a little bit. loosened up a little bit, snug her down a little bit. the motion I'm sliding back and forth in and out. What this is gonna achieve is it's gonna bring these work all the imperfections out of the rings. Okay. And that's gonna allow that scope to line up properly once it's mounted. part of all this is cleaning everything up when you're done. Some scope rings out there have a little piece of foam on the inside of them. Those are usually the cheaper brand scopes, or scope rings, I should say. Scope rings have this little piece of foam in there to help take out imperfections during the manufacturing process of making the rings. That stuff does work, but it doesn't help. It helps to have them checked still. I, Always checked them, always taking that stuff off and just lapped the rings. These 
these rings are actually made by Henry for this rifle and you can see that they were still off and you can see them in that video, that little picture I made video, or a little part of the video earlier. Um, so it doesn't matter, they're not always perfect. Sometimes you get lucky. Put them on and they don't have an issue. They line up. I'm just gonna snug these ones one more time and then uh, clean everything up and check it out. spilled the car. Can't do that. All right. That's the that worst part of this whole process is cleaning everything up. You want to make sure that your rings top half stay where the bottom halves are. So, parts don't get accidentally interchanged or mixed up or Clean everything off real quick. Set the lapping rod right aside. part you gotta make sure you get everything off you don't want to leave that material in there once you mount the scope
simple green works good when it comes to cleaning this stuff. Yeah. Probably helps for me to talk a little bit. That simple green is one of my favorites. It really cleans everything off real good. And I'll go over it with rubbing alcohol. Really make sure it's clean. And then once I get it clean, I'll show you. I'll move the camera. You can see, you know, see the rings. You'll see where it removed all the material and left what was there. So it removed the high spots, left the low spots. Now everything's even. Okay, you can actually kind of see it from that angle. How we got shiny spots in there now. So I get this clean and I'll clean out the upper halves real quick. Well, I can get one soaking well. We're waiting here. important to get all that lapping material out of their compound because uh, you don't want to try and mount your scope and have that in there. <laughs> you can't compress it so it won't be torqued properly. Maybe you leave any bit of dirt or grime or whatever inside here. to get these threads cleaned out. That one is not cooperating.
do I remember to talk? I forget that there's people on here. There's, I'm making a video. So, remember to talk. I'm working on it. Just concentrating. Making sure I get it all clean. I don't want to. I have too much time. clean, ready to go. Lower halves are clean. I want you to be able to see inside of those rings. You can see, let me like point it out to you over here. That was a low spot. Everything around it was high. That's why what's around it is shiny essentially. You have the same over here. Okay, so that's what the lapping process does. It removes the high spots, makes that level all the way across. So now I go and put a scope on, put the scope on, it'll be straight across. It's not going to be off center, you know. So when it comes time to sight that scope in, it is where I want it to be. And then customer satisfied, I'm satisfied, everybody's happy at the end of the day. So but so I'm not wasting time sitting here and having everybody watch me clean the rest of the scope ring. And I'm gonna go clean them real quick. I'll come back, we'll mount the scope so see you in a minute all right i'm back so what i did i went and cleaned off the upper rings real quick uh, didn't miss much as you can see once i wipe this off real quick how that looks okay it removes any of the imperfections so what we're going to do Next is I'll take my alignment pins, I'll stick them back in there and make sure everything lines up properly. Okay. Um, I just got a part of soap in here. Let's put some rubbing alcohol in a bowl. Remember, you don't want to mix up your sculpt rings. They're made in pairs now. Okay. So upper half came off the back rim. Make sure it goes on the back rim. Screws, it doesn't really matter. Screws are screws. Just so, for my reference, so things don't get mixed up, I always keep the upper half, the front ring, off to my left. It's not gonna get mixed up sitting over there. Okay. So, take the alignment pins, we'll get them put back in.
more important thing when you're mounting any scope is you gotta make sure when you tighten it down, you tighten it down evenly. Okay, the gap between the rings should be even. So, I'll back up a little bit, I'll back a little bit. I can tell you it's already a lot better. You want to check it is because you might have to do it again. Well, like I said, this can be a process. If you got all your materials with you, it could be relatively quick about an hour, uh, start to finish for the whole process, mounting the scope and everything. Alright, so my little uh, nipples there are all lined up. It looks good. So, I'm not going to move the camera again. It's a pain in the butt, and I don't even know if you saw it on the first angle. So, no, I'll take these apart, put the ring, you know, lap and kit away, get it out of the way, get the scope up, get it mounted, uh, set the field of view get it torqued down uh, good scope manufacturers they have torque specs for their scopes I believe Vortex has it it's between 18 and 20 inch pounds uh, that's crucial because if you over torque it guess what you could crush your scope tube and what do you think that's going to do it's going to fuck up your scope so, it's very crucial that you follow the torque specs. There's a lot of people out there that just slap a scope on and call it a day. And then they wonder why they're not hitting their target. They wonder why their deer got away. Because you can't just slap a scope on and hope for the best seen so many scopes that were over torqued that were junk I'm just going to give everything a good last rub down and then we will mount the scope and get everything out of my way Thank you. 
sip of coffee. It's a coffee break. Hopefully you can read that. Good coffee cup. Okay, put it back down with the rest. down one more time some rubbing alcohol make sure we're squeaky clean Screws cleaned up. Next time, I might have to pause and I'll go let the fur balls in. They're outside. You can probably hear her in the background. Wiping your screws down. It's my protection detail outside working. Be right back. All right, I'm back. So, like I said, this one's getting a nice vortex uh, scope. That's the Diamondback series. Uh, these are good scopes. I run vortex on all of mine. I when I run my scope special next month, that they're going to be on Vortex scopes. Um, there it is. Like I said, good scopes. Manufacturers have a torque setting. This one, do not exceed 18 inch pounds of torque on the ring screws. Okay, it's crucial. So when you get your scope, you got your scope, lens covers, lens cleaner actually. Uh, it's got a manual in there, so you know what to do on how to set those scopes. Uh, this one, I believe, let me take a see, is a three and a half by ten magnification. Uh, very nice. You can set your fo your focus here. Okay. Uh, it is a fifty millimeter uh, objective lens. These are very nice scopes. I actually have this exact same one on my forty five seventy. These are great scopes. Uh, and hopefully next month, we'll see. I have a 360 buck hammer made by Henry that's gonna get a scope and a 6.5 Creedmoor that needs a scope. They're gonna be different scopes, I believe. They're gonna be four by 12s by 44. Uh, so we'll be doing those up. So when you wanna set your scope, here comes important part of making sure everything is level. Right. So make sure you get some levels out. Level your stand. Level your scope.
for doing this. I will get it out manually in a second. First, I got to do set my auger here. Well, it's just going to have me turn my fire on it. Right there. That is a nice looking scope. Okay. Luckily for me, I know everything's just about level on this table. Uh, okay. Now. Scope leveling, you gotta make sure your retic reticle is level. That means your focal line is perfectly horizontal, it's not canted to the left or right. Because it says canted to the left, you're never gonna get your scope all the way in from the left. You're always gonna shoot to the right. If it's canted to the right, you're always gonna shoot to the left. Okay, so it's very important when you do a scope, you gotta make sure that that's level. They make all sorts of nifty tools out there to make sure you can do it. Uh, this one is by far one of my favorites. I mean, you see, I got a level up on my scope. I got a level on my stand. Still, to verify 100% that my stuff is level when I send it out that door, I have about four different levels. <laughs> much to set them up Things on loosely. I'm going to set two screws in these rings for now. I just need it on there loose enough to where I can spin it if I need to. I got to make sure I lock tight these before I'm all said and done. So. You want to make sure when you lock tight them, you use blue or green. Blue or green lock tight. Because uh, that, when you if you ever, when you need to change your scope years down the road, say you drop your firearm, you fuck up your scope, or your scope's just old, and you want an upgrade, uh, you'll be able to break that blue and green. The red Loctite requires heat to get it off. And the last thing you want to do is apply heat when you don't need to. Okay.
Now, let me show you this and hopefully you can see it all. Okay. Loosen that just a little bit. You're looking at my freaking face. I got a bubble level on that right there. A bubble level on my scope, on my stand down there, and on this back here. Uh, let's try and show you exactly what's going on here. So you can see I'm shining a light through my scope, okay? And it is showing up. right there you can see my focal lines you can see how I am level with that grid okay horizontal and vertical that's how I know that scope is level so when it comes to sighting in this firearm this thing is gonna be on that was the whole point of making sure the scope is level when Know it. Okay. So even you know you don't you do this on your own. You take it somewhere to do it. You come see me. Either way, your gunsmith is not selling you a line of shit when he says he's got to mount and level the skull properly. All right. We know what we're doing, and uh, it's for your own good because we don't want you to be unhappy with the work. We want you to go out and be satisfied knowing that you just, when you get your firearm back, you take it out, you can shoot it, and you're going to hit your target. Okay? That's the whole point. So now when it comes to torquing these, make sure you have your fancy torque wrench. I leave my levels on until I have it 100% torque. That way, I know that nothing gets twisted in there. Like I said, 18. Do not exceed 18. Okay? There's 15. Right there. And what did I say? Blue Loctite, right? So we'll get the opposite ones put in that I didn't put in. Then I'll take out those ones, black tight those, and stick those in. Remember what I said, making sure your gap is even on both sides of those rings? I did that when I put the first two in. So I should just be able to torque these down evenly. I'll go back and forth. Make one snug. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. There. Torque. Torque. Okay. I'm gonna pull these two out.
actually. Put it down. Constantly making sure I'm still level. Okay. With those torqued, I'm still level. I have nothing to worry about at this point. Get myself another tube of lactate. Snug down. And snug down. Check, check them all, make sure everything is torqued properly. Like so. Now we're level. We're level on all fronts. That scope is mounted properly. Next step is to take her out to the range. Well, actually, the next step, I'll, I'll bore sight it real quick. Uh, bore sighting is great, saves you on ammo at the range, it gets you on the paper. Then it's just a matter of firing a few shots, narrowing that scope into where it needs to be. So, next step, I will take it down to bore sight it, I'll have it at the range, get it sighted in. Uh, hopefully, that's you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Maybe you guys will see the results of that tomorrow. So, like I said, so that's quick. I tried to shorten the video up as much as I can about lapping the rings and mounting a scope. I promised people I would do that. The last one was a little long, apparently. Um, but that's that. That scope is mounted, ready to go. Uh, we'll get it sighted in. This is a heck of a firearm. I'm a big fan of 3030s. I've been shooting one ever since I was a little kid. Uh, so the owner of this is going to be satisfied severely satisfied once they get this back uh, rifle season is coming up hunting season's coming up depending on where you're at what county you live in what state you live in uh, every every place is different so this is a 3030s are a heck of a brush gun that's for sure so that's it thank you